Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thanks for being here. And thank you to my subscribers. I appreciate you. We've hit 3,000 subscribers in a little over a year. So I think we're doing good as a whole community. And it's because you folks make it possible. If you get a chance, drop down in the description. There's plenty of links to look at. And the website's up and running. Of course, you know. There's a member section. You can contact me through there and lots of fun stuff to see. And I still got to work on the tech section. There's t-shirts, apparel, a little bit of everything. Okay, today we're going to do one of probably the most important videos that I'm going to do. As silly as it may sound, the heat risers make a big deal of how your car runs. And if you're running a stock center setup with your Solex or an MB, whatever you choose to use, your carburetor has to be warmed up. Even if it's 70 degrees out, and I've experienced that, if that carburetor is not warmed up properly, the gas doesn't do what it's supposed to do. I don't know all the chemical makeup of anything. I'm not gonna sit here and tell stories, but that makes a difference for the gas to atomize property or whatever they refer to it as, but it has to be at a warm temperature. A lot of times your carburetors will ice up on the inside and sometimes it'll show on the outside. If you touch your carburetor and feel the side of it, even after five minutes of running, and the outside of the base of the carburetor is cold, your gas is not gonna flow properly or burn properly. So what we're gonna to do today is clean up the heat risers properly and be cautioned of this. Take your time, you can get hurt doing this. When you're running that cable with the drill, you can do some damage to your hands, face, anything. So do this at your own caution and be careful. Okay, what I'm going to do is go over a couple things and then we're gonna show you how it's done. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna be doing this one, but on the 68, you will see a single port intake manifold. So it don't have the dual port end castings. But it still has the heat risers, okay? These heat risers are important. They hook to the exhaust system on each side. Ooh, there you go, okay. And the recirculated exhaust, the heat comes up through, and I'll show you the one on the workbench, and it warms the carburetor up. And what I was talking about, if your car's not running properly, even if it's 70 degrees out, if you touch the side of the carburetor here, you know, you're gonna feel that it's cold. It actually should be nice and toasty and warm so the gas burns properly. If not, you're gonna have stalling issues, missing, bucking. I think I made that word up. But either way, you know what I'm getting at. But this is a single port one, but it's still the same as the dual port. It still has the heat risers, okay? And then you have little gaskets in here on each side. A lot of guys, and I believe uh, my buddy Johnny's right, sometimes it's better to run a smaller hole in one side than the other with the gaskets because it almost forces like a pull through is how I can best describe it. But this is a very important video. Make sure you watch it all the way through and it'll make sense of what I'm explaining as I go along. Okay, here's the dual port intake. Your end castings go on or as you know, it functions the same as a single port. So this is for both you guys, okay? Now, these are the heat risers that hook up to the exhaust system. And some of the exhaust systems you buy, make sure the holes are drilled to where these hook up. I'll show you what I mean in a picture here if I can. And what you're gonna do is this has to be cleaned out. Carbon builds up over the years and it's not a bad thing to do. You can do this on your car by dropping your muffler off of the car and then you're clear to go up through and clean them. You don't have to pull the intake off the car to do it. It's just a little easier if it is off the car, especially for filming purposes. So what happens, this is not attached to this. This just runs underneath it. It's its own little channel, okay? But if it's clogged, it's not gonna have heat in this area to warm it up to go up to the upper intake to the carburetor. So this has to be completely cleared out and when it is, the exhaust throws the heat up through here 
it warms your intake up, clear up through the neck of the carburetor, and it'll burn properly. So you gotta make sure this is cleaned out. Like I said, you can take the muffler off or your header and do it with it on the car. It's just a little harder with it on the vehicle, but it can be done. So what we're gonna do today is clean this all out and get it all knocked out and show you how to do it. Be careful because what I'm gonna be doing, you don't even wanna wear a glove because the cable can get caught in your glove and you could have an issue. So take caution, do this at your own risk. This is entertainment purposes. I'm just showing you what to do. So let's get on it. Now what I found most easier to do technically is to put it in the vise. Let me turn this just a hair. because it's easier for it to hold. So let's put it in the vise. Let me see if I can clamp it in here. Come on. Yeah, it wants to tilt back. Let me go further. If you don't have a vise, you can do this on the ground. It's just a little bit tougher to do. There we go. It's in the vise nice and properly. Or I should say tight. There we go. Okay, first things first, you're going to need an old clutch cable. That's about a really perfect size for getting through the holes, okay? And my buddy Casey recently donated me an extra clutch cable that he had, an older one. And Casey's a really good dude. He uh, just actually picked up another Beetle not long ago. He drove, I don't know, I think three states away to pick it up. Here's a picture of it here. And Casey told me to come over and grab a clutch cable off of him that I can use because he had an extra older one that he wasn't using. So thanks, Casey. He's a good dude. Lives like five minutes for me. Outstanding. Okay, so you're going to need a clutch cable. Uh, an older one, obviously. You don't want to buy a new one. And what I did is I cut it up into different lengths. A lot of people do this. So I made one about 8 or 9 inches, one about 10 or 12 inches, one a little longer, and then one long to make it all the way through. And I'll show you why here. Now here when we start out, we're going to be needing to clean all the way through here, okay? And that's the main thing. So what we got to do, and what you can do first, is take your air nozzle. And if you don't have one, you can buy the compressed uh, canned air like you see here. It just don't blow quite as strong. So you can always get yourself a cheap little compressor. You'll make use of it in the garage. You're gonna put it in here and see if you got air. Oh, I have none. When you blow through here. When you blow through here, you should have the air coming out the other side which would tell you this whole channel's clean, okay? This one is not. So we're gonna do the proper procedure on cleaning it out, so let's get on it. Okay, first things first, we're going to take our shortest one, about eight inches, and we're gonna put it in the drill. So let's set that up. Now, pay special attention to this when you're doing it, okay? You know that this line is wound in a certain direction. You don't want to go against the direction or it'll unwind and splinter out and look like that. And that won't do any cleaning, okay? So you need to go with the winding. This one's wound this way. So we need to reverse the drill so that it winds, it goes with the wind. You know what I mean, okay? So we're gonna start putting it through here and let's see how far we can get inside of here. Now, see how it's flexed? That's good, because it'll do that inside of there. So let's do it again. Okay, now obviously, we're only making it that far, so we're to here. Now we'll go a little bit further, okay? Let's loosen this up. I'll speed the film up here. Make sure, if you put it in the opposite way, that you're not against the winding still. 
okay? Let's try this. Now watch with your hand that it don't bite you. Okay. So now, let me just puff a little air. Nothing's coming out, and I didn't think it would because we didn't do the other side yet. So, let's go to this side. See what I mean? You can get hurt real quick if you're not careful, like me. I'm going to slightly bend this a little bit, and I'll show you why. A little bit more. Because when that goes in, it's going to be scraping along the sides of it. So let's try that. See how much it fights me. Move it out slow. Okay. With that bent like that, it's sweeping along the sides. I doubt if this worked yet. Oh. <coughs> that worked. Blow through this. Well, let me blow this way a little bit more. Whoop. Is that not amazing or what? I like it. Now, we're going to run the long one all the way through, okay? And the nice thing is, once this is all cleaned out all the way through here, that heat will circulate through and warm that intake up, and you're going to have a really good running carburetor. Let's do the long one. Okay. Sorry, it's a little dusty. We're gonna try to run this through and see what happens here. Now watch, this one's long, so be careful. It's not wanting to bend. There we go. right there we've made it through the whole way now what I'm gonna do here <coughs> should be wearing a dust mask what I'm gonna do is bend this slightly because you want it to scrape the sides all the way through so I'm gonna give it a little bend little more of a bend and the windings spread out a little bit see how that's fluctuating around that's what you want towards the end because it's scraping all them walls this is so important to do trust me Stop the drill and pull it out slow all right now let's hit it with some air run it through the other way now you want this really clean especially if you're taking the time to drop your muffler and do it okay <coughs> sorry it's a lot of dust <coughs> sorry I should have a dust mask on so add that to the list of needs that's a lot of carbon I'm bending that there we go now it's gonna sweep the sides and that's what you watch for 
<coughs> wow, excuse me. So, let's blow the air one more time. A little more came out. Just to show you what I mean, because you're not here to fill it. You want it to blow through. Hope that made sense. Now, after you do this, if you want to, you can honestly turn this upside down, okay? <coughs> wow. Let me show you. You can turn this upside down. And remember, this is all a separate unit. It's not connected together to this. It just throws the heat up to it. What you can do is get yourself a little funnel, take some evapo rust, like you see here. I really like using that stuff. And fill it up. It'll come up to here and it'll sit in this tube. <clears throat> and let it sit for about three hours, four hours, 12 hours, 15 hours, whatever you are patient enough to do if you have it out of the car. And go ahead and let it soak and it'll really clean it out and then repeat the process and blow it out. This one is cleaned and it's ready for use. And we'll check something one more time. Now that it's cleaned out, it will have optimal heat going up to the intake. And remember, like I said, this is for single port also. So your single port manifolds are set up the same. You just don't have the dual port end castings. But now with this being cleaned out, all the heat will transfer up when the car warms up, which don't take long. It will heat this part of the intake, which will burn the fuel properly. And there you have it. So that's your weekly update. Uh, next week, we're going to do a will it run. It's that time. I had to get a couple other things done first. Plus, I got to fix a distributor up to make it function properly or it won't run. Uh, that's very important to do this intake. And I don't mean to keep repeating myself. But a lot of people will have problems and not realize their carburetor's not warm enough because that's what these were built to do. Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I've hit 3,000 subs. I just got to figure out how to do it and how to properly pick the person because I don't want anyone cheated. I got a lot of great subs here. I'm going to do a giveaway soon and I will mail you something very cool. And I'll do that on the next video of an upcoming announcement, how to enter into it. I'm just trying to figure out how to do it fairly. It isn't like I could have y'all stop by, which would be cool, and pull a rabbit out of the hat. I don't know where that came from. Okay, I'll talk with you soon. Thanks for being here.